Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank the witnesses. Um, I understand that, according to your testimony, that we will be training and equipping approximately 5,000 in one year. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Is and I saw now the estimates are that there's some 31,000 metastasizing in a very rapid fashion into a much larger force. To many of us, that seems like a inadequate response to what? Would you please, please be quiet? Would, I'm asking you now to please leave the room. Please remove their slave. Please remove her. The disruptions are not going to be acceptable to anybody. I always appreciate special attention from this group, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Senator McCain. Shame on you, Senator McCain. And obviously, this group of 5,000, as you mentioned, in unit size deployments will be back in. in uh, Syria fighting against ISIL. They'll also be fighting against Bashar Assad, which they've been doing for a number of years before ISIL was ever a significant factor. Now, they will be fighting against Bashar Assad, and Bashar Assad will attack them from the air, which he has done uh, with significant success, but not only against them, but there's been 192,000 people who have been slaughtered in Syria since the onset. If, a, if one of the Free Syrian Army is fighting against Bashar Assad and he is attacking them from the air, would we take action to prevent them from being attacked by Bashar Assad? Uh, Senator, uh, let me begin the first part of your question, the 5,000. Um, I, 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 dispense with that. I, I'd like to answer the question, will we, if the Free Syrian Army units are attacked from the air by Bashar Assad, will we prevent those attacks from taking place and take out Bashar Assad's air assets, both helicopter and fixed wing, that will be attacking the Free Syrian Army units? Well, um, we're, first of all, not there yet, but our focus is on ISIL. And that is the threat so right now to our country and to our interests and to the people of the region. So what we are training these uh, units uh, for, yes, is a stabilizing force in Syria as, as an option. Uh, but the first focus is, as I just said, as the president laid out in his statement to the country. I take it from week. your answer that we are now recruiting these young men to go and fight in Syria against ISIL, but if they're attacked by Bashar Assad, we're not going to help them. They, they will right. defend themselves, Senator. Will we help them against uh, Assad's air? We will help them and we will support them How as will we, we have help trained them. them. Uh, will we repel Bashar Assad's air assets that will be attacking them? Any, any attack on those that we have trained who are supporting us, uh, we will help them. I guess I'm not going to get an answer, but uh, it seems to me that you have to neutralize Bashar Assad's air assets if you are going to protect these people that we are arming and training and sending in to fight. Is that inaccurate, General Dempsey? The uh, coalition we're forming, Senator, won't form unless, if we were to take Assad off the table, we'd have a much more difficult time forming a coalition, but I think what you're hearing us express is an ISIL first strategy. I don't think we'll find ourselves in that situation given what we intend to do with the. Uh, you don't think that the Free Syrian Army is going to fight against Bashar Assad, who has been decimating them? You think that these people you're training will only go back to fight against ISIL? Do you really believe that, General? 
What I believe, Senator, is that as we train them and develop a military chain of command linked to a political structure, that we can establish objectives that defer that challenge into the future. We do not have to deal with it now. That's a fundamental misunderstanding of the entire concept and motivation of the Free Syrian Army. The, it is Bashar Assad that has killed many more of them than ISIS has. I agree. Has. And for us to say that we are going to go in and help and train and equip these people and only to fight against ISIL, you're not going to get many recruits to do that, General. I guarantee you that. And that's a fundamental fallacy in everything you are presenting the, uh, this committee today. General, uh, Secretary Hagel, uh, was the President right in 2012 when he overruled most of his national security team and refused to train and equip the moderate opposition in, for in in Syria at that time? Uh, Senator, I was not uh, there at the time, so I'm uh, limited. Well, I'll ask General Dempsey then. He was there at the time. I'm sorry, Senator, when you asked the question. Was the uh, President right in 2012 when he overruled his Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State, and Director of the CIA and refused to train and equip the modern opposition forces in Syria, which, uh, according to your testimony, we're doing today? Senator, you know that I recommended that we train them, and that you know that for uh, policy reasons, the decision was taken in another direction. Thank you. Um, are you concerned, uh, Secretary Hagel, about our southern border? We received uh, uh, testimony from our Homeland Security people that our border is porous, and uh, the uh, people who are now free to travel to the United States and also other radical elements might cross our southern border to attack the United States? Uh, I'm always concerned about uh, I mean, is that a border. serious concern of yours? I think we have to always look at these things as serious concerns. To, in other words, do you think we have to improve our border security, on, especially on the southern border? Uh, we, we can improve our border security. Thank you. Uh, my time has expired. Thank you very much.